Not sure how this survived, but green bell pepper, Chinese giant. Uh, feels pretty good actually, a little, little soft right there. I'm gonna give it a shot. But uh, this is bow tie Dave, not wearing a bow tie today. After the Christmas freeze we had, uh, all the peppers need to get cleaned up um, and uh, all the shriveled leaves and slimy leaves need to, get, need to get cut off. I did notice there's some scotch bonnet, green scotch bonnet peppers down here. They're edible. They feel a little soft though, like the cold got to them. Got a peri peri, couple of peri peri in there too. They're green, but I'm gonna give them a shot. I wanna try, in fact, uh, hmm, all right. Scotch bonnet. It's supposed to be a pretty hot pepper. It's green though. I haven't had a lot of chance to uh, develop uh, a lot of capsaicin yet. Sorry for the windy day. We got a storm system moving in. In fact, I'm trying to get as much of this recorded as I can before the rain hits. But uh, <laughs> this may be entertaining, it may be a dud. Let's see what happens. taste. What a good flavor. Look at all the seeds in there. Oh my. Now, so the heat is down in that part right there, in where the seeds are. Not bad. Certainly not full force. I wouldn't do that with a with the yellow one. It's got a very thin wall, but boy, the flavor! 
Oh my goodness. That's gonna make a good, ooh, okay. That's a heat that creeps up on you. Ooh. Okay, Scotch bonnet. Nice flavor. I understand why people like it. Very nice flavor. Nice heat. That's gonna be some good hot pepper sauce when it grows up. Ooh. I think it got my vein popping out a little bit, maybe I don't know. Okay, it's starting to subside. That was good. I like that pepper. First time I ever had one of my own. I'm gonna harvest a few peppers that are been through the freeze. They're not gonna be great. I'm gonna have to weigh them, figure out what to do with them. Got a lot of leaves to trim off here. I'm Bowtie Dave. If you're just stumbling in on our channel, I normally wear a bow tie. I like hot peppers. Ooh, it's starting to creep down a little bit. That's a nice heat. If you're just stumbling across my channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any videos that come up. We talk mostly about gardening, sometimes about life. Sometimes I eat a hot pepper or two. If you're returning, thank you for subscribing. Every subscription helps. Whew. That's a hot pepper. I'll continue this in a minute. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So one of the biggest lessons I've learned in gardening and we're entering my fourth year of gardening. I've had three successful years of gardening and I call this past year successful because, well, I learned a lot. And uh, frankly, if you can learn anything, then uh, no matter what happens, there's no failure. But I learned a lot about this soil, this equestrian compost. In fact, I was just talking to a friend about uh, how this stuff probably steals some nitrogen, may steal some nitrogen from the plants and maybe why my lettuce and other leafing things did not do well this year. Um, I did feed these things uh, pretty good and further up. Now the reason why these first few plants are so much smaller is because they were planted a lot later. But uh, anyway, so patience and involves you know coming out here after a freeze like we had and looking like you can see here on this plant uh there's two branches here of this pepper plant the leaves look terrible in fact let me cut off some of these leaves here while i'm talking but uh the leaves the the branch themselves you can see it's kind of yellowing down here and this is the kind of stuff that i need to go through every single plant up in here and do is clean it up. And this does take some patience. But really, the biggest part of patience is waiting. And 
you know, th this happened a week ago. These peppers got froze a week ago. And uh, I let it set for a couple of days under the low tunnel. Then when I opened it up, I let it set, set a few more days. So they're not as slimy a leaf as they were. In fact, you can see here, um, they're, they're beginning to dry. And they'll go, they'll just sit here just fine. Go back into the ground. But uh, like looking at this pepper right here, um, it's lost all its leaves. It's a relatively new plant. It was only in the ground uh, maybe two months from the time, uh, till the time it froze. So I don't know how good of a root system it's gonna be. However, I can tell down here at the base, there actually is still some green. And so I'm hopeful that this thing is gonna survive. So basically, I've waited, let it just tell me what it needs. These things are actually sapping some life out of it. So even you wanna get those leaves off, which is what I'm gonna be doing here for the whole bed. But, uh, we're going to have to cut these down to a healthy stem. So in the hopes they can start pushing out some more, uh, more leaves and start again. And like you look at this one and I cut this one right here and right here. And that doesn't look like much and it may not make it. It may have been too hard for it. I don't know. But um, I'm going to give it a chance. And what's going to happen here is with all the cutting back, this plant is going to get the message and say, oh, I need to make some leaves. And it's going to start trying to make leaves. Question is, will it be able to make leaves soon enough before it dies? And uh, that's going to be the big question. But all these, now I'm looking at, at this one over here, just barely in the frame. Let me turn the camera a little bit. So this one right here, it actually has a really good looking stem under all these leaves. These leaves are not just sitting there dead, wilted and doing nothing. They actually protected the stem. Look how much green is left on it. It's not much of a plant. In fact, this is one of the ones that sat in a, these, all these, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six plants, all sat in solo cups for a really long time and were stunted until I put them in the ground. And uh, so, but these leaves actually protected the stem from too much damage and actually provided a little more insulation. Now, in this low tunnel, Everything was protected from wind, but any little extra bit of protection that it can give itself, it will do that. And this was a perfect example because this really looks like a healthy stem. Ooh, no, nope, that's a little soft. Hmm, I may rescind that. It looks like all the way back down here. It looks like it did uh, hurt the stem. So, yep, yeah, I feel a an, an, uh, node right here but I'm concerned, yeah, see this stem is very soft. So I'm gonna come down to here and see if that thing can do it again. And of course you say, well, why are you doing that? Just plant a new plant. And uh, I could do that, but remember, just said I'm learning. And this is a good year to learn. And uh, I wanna find out if these things can, ooh, it's got some roots under there. Oh, that's the water line. It does have some roots under there. So the question is, are those roots enough to get it to develop again? Are they enough to get this? And see, that stem feels really good. hard. It's 
tough love or something like that, right? But really, it's just about giving this thing another chance, trying to encourage it to grow again. Ooh, there's still a little green right there. I'm gonna take this to this point. So it doesn't look like much. But I'm gonna give that thing another chance to grow. And here's the deal. Someone with a lot more experience than me might be able to tell me right now whether that's gonna grow or not. For me, it's just learning. Whether that thing lives or dies, I'm gonna learn something. And it's gonna be just as good. Now, I'll admit, I would prefer to have the scotch bonnet peppers out of it. But I'm prepared to sit, wait, and learn. I'm just kind of gently squeezing and if it's really if the stem is feeling really floppy like that doesn't feel floppy at all that feels sturdy that feels floppy that does too I've seen peppers come back from worse. So these old leaves, the plant knows these old shriveled leaves are here and it keeps trying to get energy from them and they're, they are giving their last to put energy into the plant. And into, in fact, looky here. There's a scotch bonnet right there. There's a couple of peri peri right here. Another peri peri up there. Can you see that in the camera? Nope, you can't. Let me do the camera up a little bit here. So I can see this one. This plant over here is really struggling, but these are kind of in the middle. I have good hope for these. I have a lot of good hope for these. These peri-peri actually feel good. They're green. Oh, that one doesn't. Yeah, that one's all nasty. They're green, but you know what? They're okay to eat. Like we just found out on that scotch bonnet there. They got a little bit of heat to them. Oh, that scotch bonnet tasted so good. I understand why people like it. Can't wait to get a good peri-peri though. So, anyway, how about we play some of the theme music and uh, get some of this taken care of.
you can see it's a lot of tough love. But now that the leaves are off these, the plant's gonna take a hint and hopefully start putting out new leaves. And the cool thing is we're gonna know almost immediately if this works as it'll start shooting immediately. I actually did see new growth on a couple of these and I went ahead and pulled it all off just to stimulate more as that's what they do. You pull the leaves off like this, it gets them more excited to grow leaves. So I might uh, come in here and give them a shot of nitrogen so it'll accelerate leaf growth for a while, seeing as we've started all over again now. Fortunately, the plants don't get frustrated. But, so I'm going to I'm going to end up getting this side done. And then when I'm done here, I'm going to flip the plastic over the other way and I'll get that other side done. Before I can reach it easy. So here we go. All cleared up. Every single shriveled leaf is gone off the plants. I did see a couple of uh, relatively new leaves. I don't know if they were maybe just forming just before the freeze or not. I went ahead and pulled them all. That will do nothing but stimulate growth. Those plants will hopefully start shooting out little leaves everywhere. And I've seen it before and anyone who's ever successfully overwintered peppers probably recognize that it's what you're going to look like when you're starting to overwinter and uh, the thing is <laughs> we're heading into some warm weather in the end of December beginning of January no really cold in sight so I have a feeling within two weeks we're going to see a lot of stuff in here now keep an eye out for the January raised bed garden tour because if I'm right you're gonna see a lot more green in here that is if we don't get another freeze here in Destin Florida though we don't see a lot of freezes so that Christmas freeze was kind of a fluke we'll have to see what happens interestingly enough as I got to the other end where the more established pepper plants are there was more solid stems, good looking stems. And so some of the ones down on the other end uh, really had staying power. And that's kind of what my theory was that the longer they're in the ground, the better they would withstand this uh, 18 degree weather here in Destin, Florida. Some of these newer ones here on the end, I'm a little more concerned about, but they do feel good. They're very short, but here's the thing. You know, I could plant new plants and start a new crop. I could start all over again, but it's going to take about a month or two to get to the point that some of these are right now. And this little setback, if I'm right, is not going to be worth a whole month or two. In fact, they may start showing in two weeks, especially with uh, the weather that we have forecasted right now. It is looking great. I'm very excited. So follow along. If, uh, if, if you've watched this long, thank you for watching. Uh, if you've stumbled across our channel, be sure to subscribe and uh, don't miss the that January garden tour because I will be uh, looking in here on, on that January raised bed garden tour. And see what it looks like if you have subscribed thank you so much i appreciate you being here uh, i like doing this this is actually my own journal of things that are happening i refer back to these videos which is why there's a lot of indexing in the in every single video i do and i i'll be standing in the store wondering if i used that kind of seed before and i can go back and look in a video and say oh yeah that's the one i had before so it's very helpful for me, but I'd like to see this channel grow. I'm happy to share all the information that I'm recording. 
And uh, if you know of anybody else that might benefit from anything here, please share this on social media. You can get the link down at the share button below or in this in the frame here uh, and just paste that link right on Facebook or YouTube and uh, last thing click the thumbs up if you found anything useful or informational educational or just plain stupid entertaining like eating a scotch bonnet pepper <laughs> yeah it's been a couple of hours since I ate that I'm feeling a lot better now thank you for asking but I'm gonna have to do it again after it's developed. Scotch bonnet is a hot pepper, very hot pepper, but very tasty, yum. So I did get a little bit of harvest out of this and let me show you that and then we'll close off this video. Two Chinese giant, red, they're not red, but I found a second one. This thing is massive and it is in great shape. It was actually over there on the south side of the low tunnel, tucked right in next to the wall. So it was very protected. This one here has one ever so slightly soft side, but these are fully edible green bell peppers. Two hundred sixty grams. There we go. Have some purple jalapenos here, some peri peri, scotch bonnet, regular jalapeno, or I should say, right, jalapeno travelers, and then of, the, of course those giants. So that's the harvest. And uh, again, thanks for following along. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Have a happy new year, and have a blessed day.